summary of the presentation on this slide. So we will uh, actually talk about the morphing wing projects. We had uh, two uh, main wing projects, like really major projects. And they took place with Bombardier Thales, which are aerospace company, with a research institute, uh, NRC, in Canada, and also in Italy with Alenia Cira. And um, uh, in addition, we had also two other universities participants, uh, one from Naples in Italy and another one from Canada, uh, Ecole Polytechnique. So the to topics of the morphing wing projects usually are multidisciplinary, so they regard the interactions between aerodynamic structures and controls in order to improve the aerodynamic performances and also the structural performances on morphing wing, it goes with, of course. So today we talk um, also about the structures, of course, so it's like an aerostructure control optimization, actually. And we work on two main projects. One, um, uh, one was, like the first one was, of course, a conceptual morphing or, or a pre-design. And the second one was a morphing of an existing wing tip of a real aircraft. And you can see here uh, like the morphing skin usually, which was on the upper surface of the airfoil and the actuator's uh, positions. So usually we had a flexible skin in composites on the upper surface, which moved with um, two actuators. And uh, it, uh, the actuators would move up and down usually and uh, uh, and they uh, they displacements would be associated with the best um, positions for the uh, for the skin for improving the aerodynamic performances. Uh, now, in order, uh, the main objectives of such a project were to design and manufacture a morphing wing as mentioned before, rigid and flexible skin. Actually, what I showed just in this uh, slide here, oops, uh, it was an airfoil, so which is a 2D representation of a wing. Um, in, um, as we are presenting two projects in parallel, it's important to say that uh, the actuators were controlling the positions, of course, of the skin. And uh, the SMAs, like the smart material actuators in the project two, um, in the project one, were replaced in the project two by electrical actuators uh, in order to, um, uh, to respect uh, some, um, uh, some certification issues. That's what we believe. So the idea was to install also and to make functioning uh, optical sensors in project one because Thales was um, interested in uh, this kind of installation and functioning uh, but uh, in the end uh, they were not very good for measuring the flow transitions of the aerodynamic performances. We also developed an, an active control system of the morphing wing which was able to extend the laminar flow region over the upper surface of the airfoil. And the control results validation were performed during bench tests, therefore in the absence of aerodynamics and during wind tunnel tests. Um, it was important also to validate the flow transition using the cool light pressure sensors and the infrared test measurements at NRC during wind tunnel tests. Uh, we had like three phases, three years for, for this type of project. So we had just always three uh, different teams um, for the design and the validation, actually four, if we count the NRC where we did the wind tunnel testing, which is a research institute. And the other three university participants were um, like uh, mainly a corporate clinic, um, also the structural part, and uh, we, we also at EDS, we were doing the controlling. Actually, we were doing really the whole integration of the project, like for aerostructure controls. Um, it's important to say, of course, that in the first phase, we had the design phase, and in the second, we had the manufacturing phase, and in the third phase, we had the um, uh, validation in the wind tunnel of the test. 
Regarding the control concepts, because they are very much related to the aerostructural optimization, once again, we had the rigid and upper surface flexible skin modeling of the wing. We had the uh, SMA actuators. On this slide, we have really uh, shown just like the actuators and the scheme for the first project where you use MAR material actuators. We also used optical sensors, but also we used pressure pull light sensors, which were used actually to measure the pressures on the upper surface. And uh, we use open and closed loop controllers for the time re and also real time optimization in the wind tunnel. And here you have two schemes. Uh, the first one on the um, left hand side, it's the scheme of an open loop controller because we actually designed a CFD database of all airfoils, um, all of optimized airfoils. And uh, then we could, um, we could uh, modify their shapes using SMA actuators for different flow conditions, therefore for different angles of attack, speeds and Reynolds, as you see on the left-hand side. So this one on the left-hand side, it's uh, the open loop. I'm sorry, I don't know what, what I'm doing. I'm trying to show you also with the mouse and then uh, the mouse is running all plates. And on the um, right hand side, you can see the closed loop, which was done on the transition region actually uh, of the pressure. So uh, measured by optical sensors or by actually cool light sensors. So this is the CFD database and the control. These are the SMA and the sensors. So um, regarding the experimental setup description, here we mainly look at uh, the aerodynamic part so because we needed to optimize the aerodynamics. Uh, we needed to morph uh, the flexible skin using the two actuation points like for, with the SMA, as I said previously. And uh, as you've seen in, uh, in the slide, uh, well, this one here, you had the displacements dy2, dy1 and dy2 in the two positions uh, versus, um, um, okay, uh, versus Mach number. And here are for different uh, angles of attack. Mach number is representative for the speed. If you don't know, like airplanes fly for subsonic Mach numbers, smaller than one and uh, for higher, then you have the uh, transonic and then the supersonic uh, flow. And for five angles of attack, so you have here actually seven angles of attack and five Mach number. I think I found here a little mistake on my page. So for Mach numbers between zero, two and zero, three and alphas between minus one and two degrees because we looked into the cruise regime while the Mach number was a subsonic one because of the wind tunnel uh, capacity at NRC. Now you have some pictures here of the um, experimental. Um, I'm just looking. Do I have to present until 10.30 or? Hello? Is anyone listening? No? I don't know. But so. Take your time. It's fine. I'm here. Sorry? Please, please take your time. I'm here. Oh, okay, so I can uh, present longer than yeah, 10 30, yeah. right? That's up to huh? Yes, yes, you can present. Oh, okay. Yeah, please. Okay, um, so the experimental setup is described by the wing model of 0 0.5 meters by 0 0.9 meters, while its lower part is aluminum block and its upper part is um, the aluminum structure. Here is actually what I'm trying to draw, show with a, a slide is with the mouse is that it's a composite part, right? And it was done in carbon and Kevlar. And we also had uh, once again, the shape memory actuators in nickel and titanium. So these are like the combinations of the actuators. So we have the bottom aluminum and the upper, the flexible skin. Uh, now the, the mechanism of actuation for this first project uh, as I tried to say before, from the initial CFD studies related to the optimal structural uh, configuration of the flexible structure, we had two actuation lines, which are positions and at um, uh, two, at, sorry, one second, oops. Um, 
it's very hot in here. So at 25% and at 46% of the core from the airfoil leading edge. So that's the airfoil leading edge. Here you have a wing, of course. And from the airfoil leading edge, you have at 25% of the core, you have this actuation line. And then at 47% of the core, because the core is like this one, you had um, the second, second one. And that's the mechanism, a roller road cam, like the displacements versus length uh, ratio that I'll uh, explain it in the next slide. So regarding the actuation mechanism concept, you had the flexible skin here, and uh, you have a compression spring, the support plate, the three SMA wires for each actually uh, smart material actuator, each one was done in that, and the cam. So actually each actuation line is using three shape memory alloy wires, which are all, so you can see them here in blue, uh, they have all a length of 1.8 meters and contains also a cam, which moves in translation relative to the structure on the X axis. The cam is, causes the, is causing the movement of a road. So that's the road like the red road. Uh, road. Um, related to the roller, that's the roller, and on the skin, on the z-axis. The use recall is a gas spring. When the SMA is heating, the actuator contracts, then the cam moves to the right, and um, the roller goes up and the displacement is going up. So actually, we always look at the displacement, that's what is important, up and down. And when it's cooling, it moves to the left, so the skin, it goes down. The horizontal displacement of each actuator is converted into a vertical displacement at a rate three over one, so a cam factor one over three. And uh, regarding the experimental setup, like the bench test in the absence of the, uh, of, of the aerodynamics, in both projects, uh, we did them like in our laboratory. So here is in the first uh, structural laboratory. So we had input signals, of course, the positions of the actuators like these ones, which were given by uh, the LVDTs, which are also called linear variable differential transformer, transformers. So the length is three multiplied by uh, dy, like the dis upward displacement, and the SMA temperature monitoring. Then we had the output signals, which were the control voltages to power supplies, between zero and two volts. And the control current for SMA was between zero and 10 ampere. So in other words, you have, we had here like 32 sensors, 16 coolites and 16 uh, optical. And uh, after the installation, um, they were also connected with the SMA power supply to get like the, as I said, the power supply and the current. And then they were connected with the, the thermocouples also here with all our computer uh, software in MATLAB. So the experimental setup, well, the, the two students you've seen earlier, they were sitting here. Uh, this experimental setup uh, consisted in bench test laser scanner, which you see it on the left-hand side, laptop MATLAB simulating control in the center, and the power supply and data acquisition in the, on the right-hand side. Uh, regarding the sensors installation during wind tunnel tests, again, like we had the optical sensors and cooling sensors testing in the second wind tunnel on wind model. We had to validate the flow transition with the infrared tests at NRC. And actually, the idea was um, to do that with the Tolman Schlichting waves frequency. So we had to have a higher frequencies than one hertz detected by Kulite sensors. We had also prime photonics optical sensors tested, which were temperature compensated in the second wind tunnel test, when we have the frequency of 10 hertz. So you have all this characteristic of optical sensors. You see how they look like, and also the pressure uh, piezoelectric cool light sensors here. Here are like the optical sensors. So in the end, we, we could see that uh, the optical sensors had not enough accuracy and resolution 
because they were too noisy to measure the flow transition. When we talk about flow transition, it's actually the flow between the laminar and turbulent. So it's something that you can see through infrared testing in these figures. So here are the draws of pressures. Here are the SMAs, as you can could see on the other airfoil uh, figure before. And actually the flow transitions through infrared, we can see it when uh, we have the change of color between shapes. This is why here you have 45% of the cord, 66% of the cord for transition. So the idea of the whole project was to have, I'm not sure I was clear enough in the previous slides, to, to have much more laminarity on the effort than turbulence because the laminarity is an order flow and it goes, if you have more laminarity, then you will have um, um, much better aerodynamic performances. So you will have less drag force, which in mechanics is associated to friction. So if you have less friction, then the aircraft performs much better. So this is the reason why we had this uh, movement that's like the trailing edge and that's the leading edge of the airfoil. Uh, so here is another way of representing, again, like the flow transition between black and white with the turbulence and uh, we had some leaks in the Kulite sensors. So after each flow, after each wind tunnel test, we had to change, um, I mean, to remove the sensors where we had leaks. So this is like a uh, disadvantage of our testing. And uh, now uh, here again, you can see like on figures of pressure versus core that uh, uh, you can have the coolite uh, pressures versus RMS here, like uh, that they could show the transition and on both figures. So um, we had to validate then that uh, this aerodynamic part we had done the transition point real time detection and visualization for all 35 aero optimized airfoil in order to move the transition point more to the trailing edge. And it was done using the pressure data obtained from the 16 Kulai pressure sensors, because as I said earlier, uh, the optical sensors are not good enough. Then the pressure signals were analyzed through fast Fourier transforms, FFT decomposition, in order to detect the magnitude of the noise in the surface airflow. Then the data were filtered by means of high pass filters and were processed by calculating the root mean square or RMS of the signal in order to obtain a plot diagram of the noise in the airfoil flow. Uh, here you see all the um, images from the wind tunnel testing you see like uh, at NRC. Uh, we had uh, the, the opportunity then to test and validate various control methodologies. So among them you see PID on and off controller or self-tuning fuzzy controller. So you can see the displacement of actuators versus time, the temperature versus time, and again the displacement versus temperature which is a combination of these two. And uh, it's important to say that in red is one um, curve then for one SMA and in blue for the other SMA. Uh, now, regarding the wind tunnel test, uh, we could see that um, the flow transition occurs on uh, certain vari various channels. When we call 13, it means that uh, these are like corresponding to the sensors. Uh, the different uh, six, 13 Kulite sensors, we remained with 13 instead of 16 after testing. These are the same types of curves. And here is what we could see in real time on our screen in the sense that we had Mach numbers, angles of attack, which were the flight conditions, and we had the optimized versus real displacements for both uh, SMAs. Uh, and uh, on the bottom, like this two, uh, showed mainly the pressure displacements and the pressure versus frequent and the frequencies. So where the peaks were, the, the maximum peaks were, then it means over there we had the um, transition occurring. So now you can see the movement. You see, for example, the 
uh, the initial air file in black and the red and blue. So, uh, okay. And, and the idea was in real time to fit the optimized um, calculated displacement for each SMH with uh, the real displacement. In the second project, so we did much more structural work as in the first project where we had actually a modeling of carbon and Kevlar of the wing. Uh, because here we had to work actually, while, while the first project concerned a conceptual uh, idea, the second was a morphing of a real prototype wing with the aim to improve its aerodynamic performance. This morphing wing was equipped with a rigid aileron designed and manufactured by the Canadian team, and then with a morphing aileron that was designed and manufacturing, manufactured by the Italian team. So uh, while in the first project we had um, only a wing, in the second we also had an aileron. The aileron is uh, helping to roll the aircraft. The electrical actuators were built in house at ETS, and they were used during the experimental tests. The static tests at 1G were performed to verify and validate the loads supported by the morphing wing. The flow transition delay on the morphing wing tip, which was a system comprising a wing and aileron, have been achieved through numerical aerodynamic calculations in this project. So in 3D on the airfoil and three in th sorry, in 2D on the airfoil and 3D on the wing. And the experimental tests were uh, performed again in the laboratory before, before in the wind, uh, wind tunnel. And the loads were measured in freight and the control tests were performed. Therefore, the pressures were measured by cool ice sensors for transition delay. High level control and communication methodologies were designed, verified and validated using the an, um, national instrument system. Here we were lucky because we had in our group uh, a student from National Instrument System and the luck were, lucky part was that he could help us in modifying the software for our control methodologies. A number of five different algorithms were applied and validated for controlling the morphing wing displacements using the electrical actuators. It consisted, this morphing wing tunnel wing tip model consisted of two parts. The flexible skin, which was designed and manufactured at ETS, and the rigid wing box with a rigid aileron designed and manufactured at NRC. And both the wing box and the aileron had a round trip. Uh, the wing model had a rectangular platform of uh, 1.5 meters for the cord and for the span, and it was mounted vertically in the wind tunnel. So you can see here it's uh, this uh, installation. We had this time 32 cool eye pressure taps on the rigid wing box. 28 were on the rigid aileron and on the leading edge, while 32 cool eye sensors were installed on the flexible upper skin. Traversing pressure wake rake for uh, drag measurement at the cool eye positions, it was put, and we had also high scanning rate pressure sensors on the flexible skin. We also had infrared measurements for the visual validation of the boundary layer transition, separation, and reattachment. We had also large induced aerodynamic loads. So regarding the prototype development, a part, uh, a very important part from the structural modeling was the actuators because they were chosen following uh, aerostructural optimization. So we built them in-house these were the electrical actuators in the project two. Remind you that in project one, we had SMAs uh, actuators also built in house. And these actuators were used, uh, were designed, manufactured and tested on the first prototype. We had design modification, modification and complete testing. So we had two rounds of modifications and redesigning. So you can see here the scheme in Katia and here how it looked like and it's bench testing here. Uh, the objectives of the static 1G test now. Bombardier wanted to be sure that structurally the wing could uh, well perform and uh, could resist to 1G loads in the cruise regime 
and that the actuators were able to shape the wing. So we had to uh, control the actuators also for 1G testing. For this structural testing, we had to put the wing like horizontal, horizontally, as you see here in, in our laboratory. And uh, this experimental loading generated internal for efforts, forces and moments equal or higher to those generated by the design loads of 1G without extending exceeding those generated by 2.5 G loads. High precision photogrammetry was used to measure the flexible skin under morph conditions. And circular retroreflective markers were applied on the, the, the upper surface. So the final control system hardware was tested at the LARCAS and at the INRC wind tunnel. We had to calibrate and to final test and we had to finalize the integration of the entire system. So we had here the aileron, we had here the leading edge, the lower skin, the morphing skin. Now regarding the aerodynamic optimization, we had uh, different flight cases. So we had 38 flight cases in the first round of tests, 97 in the second round of tests, and uh, 49 in the third round of tests. We had angles of attack between minus three and five degrees, and we had conventional aileron deflections between minus six and six degrees. The morphing aileron deflections, like we had assert, okay, and we had wind tunnel speeds of 51 and 85 meters per second, corresponding to Mach numbers of 0 0.15 to 0 0.25 in the wind tunnel. Regarding the second set of wind tunnel tests, uh, of 97, I go a bit faster. Among um, the 54 cases that did, 30 cases were optimized for transition delay and 24 for transition advancement. The numerical optimization was carried on the unmorphed shape of the FOI scan after the first set of tests. There were 18 cases experimentally infrared validation for the transition delay and 54 for transition advancement. So we had an average lift absolute error of 003 with a maximum absolute error of 2.64. The average drag relative error was 1.14%. And uh, the other one, like uh, the lift over drag was 1.05. In the third cases, we were also successful. 32 cases extended the laminar region versus a trailing edge. That's a trailing edge. And 31 uh, delayed the onset of the fully turbulent regime. Uh, so here are some examples of infrared transition photography. So you could see like, um, uh, the, uh, the delay of the transition. Uh, so from actually it's upside, it's 49 versus 54%. We have less, uh, a bit less uh, performances than in the first project because it was like improving something existing on uh, regional jet actually. So here is the control system from National Instrument. And this is one of my students on the left hand side with the power supplies, with a LVDT acquisition model. Here is the diagram integration. So we had to, to integrate wing and aileron controls. And that's how the interface looked like. It's um, in the second project, which looks a bit like the interface design in the first project. So there's a flight case selection, one, two, whatever, and uh, versus Mach numbers and angles of attack. And uh, here is uh, the structural work also done by um, Italian team and uh, the way they had the uh, three actuators here and uh, the, the the actuated segment was this one, and that was a passive segment. So only this one, it moved, it changed its shape, the actuated segment, in order to have better aerodynamic performances. In order to ensure perfect hinges alignment, as well as time efficient assembly, the leading edge was composed by uh, the upper and lower parts, joined by removable uh, screws. Here you have the pressure tabs. Um, we had some uh, some improvements in the future that we could do, for example, in case of aerodynamics. 
we should always look more into the 3D analysis. We should do a more preliminary CFD analysis in the winter and in, early in the project. And uh, uh, we should do more uh, research on optimization methods, mainly between aerodynamics and structures. Always the structures here, we build it in composites, but uh, we need really uh, a continuous uh, optimization improvement from the beginning of the project up to the manufacturing. Uh, we should have a we should have a limited number of constraints, the minimum possible. If not, we would have problems in, um, uh, in results. So um, we could also do a 3D aero structural optimization only for a few cases and then generalize it for, for the whole uh, system. Uh, we should do much more research on the best suited actuation mechanism. Uh, because the puncture or the electrical actuators, because they were really locally uh, moving and changing the skin shape, might not be the best solution of this type of morphing because they were producing some waves on the structure of uh, the skin. So we would need to do supplementary analysis on the skin and on its interaction with the actuation system. Therefore, uh, various materials should be researched. And uh, here uh, is our infrastructure. Actually, we have now more than a simulator. We have also a simulator for the CRJ. Here you have a level this flight simulator for uh, the Cessna Citation X. But um, as future work, we could uh, build uh, this morphing structure and integrate much better now on the simulator of CRJ. We have also a wind tunnel and a UAV.